Hey guys, it's Vol here. How are you going? As promised, I am going to be taking a look at a uh, sectorial today. It's going to be the Morat Aggression Force, which is a sectorial that you can play if you play Combined Army. So obviously an army builder, if you click over to Combined Army, you've got Vanilla up here, and then the three sectorials, Morats, Jezvasti, and Onyx, and Morats are these ones here. MAF. So, just going to zoom in so we can get a bit of a bigger view on the icons. Before I start, I want to go back, uh, actually just real quick, um, if you want to know a little bit of history of the, the visuals of Morats, I really recommend just typing Infinity Morats into Google and checking out the images because it actually shows you some of the earlier versions of the sculpts. Like at the moment, you've got these beautiful new sculpts and one of them, the, the, the biggest appeal for the sculpts for me, well for the faction for me is the sculpts I should say, but if you want to look at what the older versions look like, um, check them out, they're actually quite interesting to see how they developed. Uh, when it comes to war games, whenever I get into a new faction and, uh, well not a, not so much a new faction, a new system, like when I made the jump from Warhammer Fantasy to War Machine, I initially I didn't like the models, they, the, the sculpts hadn't grown on me, but as I started playing and started painting them, I just started liking, liking them more and more and more and more. One interesting thing about War Machine is that on the Property Press website, the photography of the, of the models isn't that great, so they didn't do a very good job of selling them, whereas over here they actually look pretty cool. Initially I didn't like the red face baboon sort of aesthetic, but you don't have to paint them that way. And the sculpts are just so nicely detailed, uh, you just eventually fall in love with them. So that's Morats. Now over on the Infinity Forums, hopefully you guys visit the forums, you read the forums. Um, here's something quite interesting, is that Morats have a bit of a track record with discussion. If you look in the Combine Army subsection of the forum, and um, check out one of the sticky threads. This is the Morats thread. It's 28 pages long. And there's even more material than that. It's actually got a couple of links here from Psychotic Storm to older threads. And what happened is that every time people started discussing Morats, it started to get really salty and vicious and people trading insults. And I'm not going to name names, but if you read those threads, <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy if you're a neutral bystander to, to figure out who the, who the problem posters were and, and who was actually cooking up the... the, the the salt, so to speak. So it's disappointing that it devolved into that. But the thing about Morats in general is that uh, people often view them as a weaker faction, a weaker sub-faction. So let's let's talk about some of the reasons for that. Morats, by default, have this rule called Morat, and it simply is uh, a package which includes two other rules, religious and veteran. So with religious, if you are gonna take a guts check, you have to pass a willpower check in order to fail it, uh, and if you fail that, you can't use the ability to sort of just uh, hide back behind cover, which uh, actually is detrimental. Most of the time, you'd prefer not to have religious than you would to actually be so courageous as to, st to stay out there. Veteran level one can be good against isolation, but it's more commonly known as the ability which prevents loss of lieutenant, or at least uh, the Morats themselves not suffering from it. But to be fair though, uh, usually in Morats you're going to be running not just the Morats themselves, but the drones and the Ikadrons and so forth. And if you lose your lieutenant, those models will still be irregular. So it's not like the whole faction's immune to, to, to loss of lieutenant, unless of course you're taking all Morats. Also the Medtech Obsidon doesn't have it either. So one of the thoughts with Morats is that um, these guys are paying more points than, for example, Zanshi and Fusiliers would and they're getting access to rules which don't exactly make them better. So generally in terms of stats, they're a bit weak. So you got a Morat Vanguard Infantry, that's this guy um, over here. These Morats were just combi rifles. So you pay 14 points for one of these dudes, whereas a Fusilia you get, it's 10. And if you look at it, you've got lower ballistic skill but higher willpower, so it's a little bit more like the Zanshi. But then you've got the Morat rules, so you're paying like an extra couple points just for those abilities, which may not necessarily be worth it. I mean, if I could play Morats and have access to some of the good things about Morats, which we'll talk about shortly, I would still rather have Fusiliers if Fusiliers were available as the line infantry. So it kind of, it's kind of annoying. Now, Morats, if you, if you read the background, are supposed to, these, supposed to be these war-mongering, ferocious creatures, which uh, are really vicious and aggressive, Morat aggression force. But they're not. That's not really how the faction ends up playing mechanically. So that's disappointing. 
one thing that I have always felt, and a lot of people have suggested this as well, is that the Morat rule should be a package which includes more things. So when you look at the wiki and go, okay, Morat is just veteran and re religious, it feels like the missing one mechanic. Now, I personally have always thought that that should be a close combat mechanic. You can't make them more aggressive and um, nastier from shooting, otherwise they just become like Pano or something like that. That's not really how you want to define them. But giving them an extra close combat boost, I think, would be really cool. Because close combat isn't a game-breaking thing. Close combat is a big deal on things that can infiltrate and have marker form. Morats just can't do that. So if you give them close combat abilities, it's going to make them fluffy. It's going to make them more interesting and more consistent with their fluff, but without breaking the game. I had to think about this recently, and I thought, well, what if you gave them Natural Born Warrior? That is kind of cool, because it very rarely comes up, but it's always just sitting there on their profile and makes them seem like these kind of kind of badasses, where if you're up against Shinobu or whatever like that, you've got a chance of, you've got a little bit of a better chance of, of, of surviving. But it doesn't break the game. Shinobu's still going to, you know, have a massive chance to kill you. Um, and the same with all those ninjas and so forth. Uh, it just makes them a little bit better at sort of surviving against Aleph and so forth. So it, it wouldn't make them too powerful. If you want to, you can decrease their close combat stat. Like, let's say, for example, we gave them martial arts level 1, so they get stealth. That's kind of cool. Maybe not so cool because you don't really vision, vision, uh, visualize the Morats as being stealthy, but at least having a close combat ability. You could give them Prothion, but then that's more of a sort of Onyx kind of thing. It's more for the Umbras and uh, Kodalis of this world, so it's not really they're not, they're not really vampires, these Morats. So what else is there? I thought Berserk would actually be fantastic. Berserk, Berserk's a very powerful skill because it allows you to trade with an enemy uh, ninja or shinobu or, or Achilles or whatever trying to close combat you, but um, what you could do to offset that is to make them very low close combat, like close combat 10, but then give them Berserk so they can go up to 16. Um, and it also grants them Assault as well, so it makes makes them into more of these creatures that have a bit of theme to them, that actually have a bit of flavour, um, without actually making it game-breaking. I, I don't, I seriously don't think that if you had Berserk within the Morat rule, that people would be going onto the forums complaining that Morats are too powerful and they're just winning all the games now, that just, just wouldn't be happening. Morats are a decent faction, as we're about to see, because uh, of certain capabilities they have, but it's not related to the Morat rule at all. So I, I think something like Berserk would be really cool, so long as you offset it with, with some other bits and pieces. So should we get into it? Here's the, here's the, here's the lineup here. So starting with Krakot Renegades. Krakot Renegades, of course, being the uh, ITS prize for the last season. And I don't think they're going to be showing up in this particular gallery, but I'm sure you guys all know what they look like. Uh, so Krakot Renegades have availability 3 in Morats, and I'm not too sure if they have that much availability elsewhere, but I don't think you'd be wanting to take 3 of them, because there are similar points cost to the Dacharatsai, and you want Dacharatsai as well. I like to take one of them, and I prefer to take the submachine gun loadout. The reason being is that if you just go for the cheapest one possible, the, ch the chain rifle um, guy, um, you're kind of missing out on the ability to actually move around and shoot at them when they dodge. Whereas with a shut submachine gun, you've still got the chest mines, you've still got two charges for the direct template, so you can still actually use it defensively. And the chest mine is actually um, helping the crack out in close combat, because it gives plus three to your close combat stat, which is really important. So you should never really take the 14.1, it should be the 15.1, unless for some reason you just, you just can't afford that extra one point, which is unlikely. Uh, sure, the other profiles are good, but um, you start getting into the expense version of it, of it then. Um, but I, I definitely recommend taking one of the profiles that has the chest mine because the chest mine is just such a good ability. Um, you should read up on what it does in close combat as well. When he dies, he inflicts uh, like uh, damage against everybody in base contact. Notice that the Krakot himself has Berserk, and so does um, uh, Kornak Gazrot. So you could simply just have that a double up with a Morat rule if Morat did include Berserk, or give these guys something else. I think that would be fine. Metachemistry level 2 is kind of cool. Um, I definitely like rolling the uh, choice that gives you extra speed, because speed is so important in this game. And because he's already got forward deployment, it just makes him really, really mobile, and you almost always get your points worth out of him if, he's in your, if, if you're using him in your active turn, like if you're going first. 
because it doesn't take too many orders to get over there and actually start trading with pieces that are more expensive than he is. Really good, uh, really good fighter. Uh, close combat stats not as good as the Dachiratsai who have like both 21 and martial arts level 4, so that's why they're better, but the thing is he's more mobile than they are because he's he's got 4 deployment level 1 and he's likely to roll uh, plus 3 movement, or sorry, plus 2 movement I should be saying. So these guys are great, um, of course these guys aren't specific to Morats even though they are Morats, they're a Morat Renegade. Uh, if you have one in your collection though, definitely you'll be running them um, with Morats at some point. Let's move on to the Kurgat Regiment of Assault Engineers. So the Kurgat, uh, one reason why people are often salty about the Kurgat, here's the Kurgat here, he hasn't got a resculpt yet as far as I know. Actually, maybe he has. I keep forgetting. So this is the old Kurgat with assault uh, cannon, sorry, auto cannon. I'm thinking Terminators from 40k. Cannot remember whether they made a new a new Kurgat. Doesn't look like it from the gallery. Regardless, uh, the the auto cannon profile is the most interesting to me because the auto cannon uh, is a really useful gun. It's uh, it's, an, it's it's got a template to it. Uh, in fact, does it have a template? I'm just going to try and re revive my memory because it's a very rare weapon. Just have a quick look. Portable auto cannon. So it it is AP EXP anti material. All right. Is it a portable auto cannon? No, it's just auto cannon. Is there any difference between the portable portable auto cannon and the normal auto cannon? I'm not sure. You guys will have to let me know. But um, it says here only Kogats from operative group can join the fire team Harris. So if you want a, a Harris team of Kogats, you're paying a lot of points because you've got this 24 point guy here, cost special weapons 1, and they only come with like boarding shotguns and Mark 12s. So you're spending tons of points on them, but you can't include the autocannon. The really frustrating thing is that if you've got such a powerful gun, you want to get it in, in your Harris so you've got the extra extra burst, right? So it just doesn't make, make sense. That's why a lot of people in the forums are quite salty about the fact that they just, I mean, there doesn't seem to be any reason why he can't be included. Like, other factions have nice things, other factions have really good Harris teams, and it just, it seriously would not be game-breaking to have the Kurgat in with the, the rest of the Harris. Um, I typically don't like to run a Kurgat myself at all. I prefer the Medtech Obsidon, which of course is Dr. Worm. So Dr. Worm is a bit more of a generic sort of combined army model, which is allowed to be included with Morats. And uh, the med tech is actually reasonably priced. You only got 23 points there. And the reason I take him is not just because he's a doctor and engineer. I mean, that's, that's good. Willpower 14 is good. But because he's a fast specialist, he's movement 6-4, and sometimes uh, there are missions where you actually really need to complete the classified. Like if it's turning out to be a draw on capture and protect, like you've both got a console and you've got your classified and the other guy doesn't get his classified, you might be able to win just purely on that. But if you're unlucky enough to get the classified where you've got to hit their opponent's HVT with an engineer or something like that, then you really need this guy. And uh, you need him to be fast. If we go back to the Kurgats, they've got no speed abilities, no forward deployment or anything like that. Um, also, if you're going to be playing things like Suryats and, dare I say it, the Sugarat, um, and you're going to be attacking them in their active turn and they keep critting you, it's very useful to have a doctor around, and this is the only doctor, as far as I know, within the faction. You can take a paramedic, I think, but yeah, only doctor. So more at vanguards. Let's go back to it. If you are thinking, yeah, I'd like to start more rats. The space monkeys look really cool. Do you buy the starter pack? Now, don't let my recommendation stop you. If you want to buy the starter pack, that's cool. I I didn't buy it. I got away without buying it because there were only two models that I wanted. I wanted this guy, the Rack Rack Sergeant Major, uh, and I wanted the Osnat. We'll talk about the Osnat soon, but I think the Osnat's actually the best Morat in the whole faction. I didn't want the rest of them. Um, I wanted the Rack Rack because it can form a cool Harris team, but um, I, I do run the Vanguards. What I did instead is I bought this box, which has the special weapons, and I count the sniper rifle as a combi rifle. And we'll talk soon about why the K1 combi rifle isn't really, K1 sniper rifle isn't very good. But um, I do want to run the hacker, missile launcher, and HMG. So I count the sniper rifle as just a combi rifle uh, forward observer. 
And then what I do is I go to the Diaphos and purchase this thing. I know quite a few Pano players, so I managed to sell Fusilier Angus and, and by Pandra to my friend. And I've got Tritac Anyat. So Tritac Anyat completes the five man core link team. So let's just clear out our list for a second. If we go here and let's just zoom in a little bit further, hopefully this can be seen on YouTube. So I like the HMG because huge benefit from a five man link team because you want you want a lot of active term firepower. The missile launcher, extremely good aero piece uh, for a lot of different reasons, especially if you can catch something else in the blast or if you're shooting at two targets close together. Uh, in a link team, the link team um, can suffer quite badly from that, especially if they move and then you arrow on one of them that's not the, the spearhead. The hacking device um, can be good if you're playing in a scenario where you need the hacker to give you a plus three bonus or if you're trying to take remotes. And then the Ford Observer, just because he's, he's cheap relative to the rest of, of, of the Morats and um, again, classifieds are scenarios where you just really need to classify it up. But then the secret weapon, Tritac Anyat. So, if we compare this to the Fusilier Link team, as I said in another video, the Fusiliers are better than the Morats in terms of base light infantry because they're cheaper and they get to do exactly the same thing but with plus one blister skill. And you don't use them to hit buttons, you've got other things to do that. So that's why the Fusilier is just hands down better than the, the Morat vanguards. The the religious and, 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 and veteran does not sort of make up the difference. But there's a bit of a catch up in the race, there's a bit of a closing in the gap here when you when you consider Tritac Anyat because when she's in the link she's effectively physical 12 plus 3 so throwing the grenades at physical 15 and that could be smoke grenades or EM grenades and in the reactive turn if she can put down smoke grenades in front it, it stops them from repeatedly spending orders to kill you. The K1 combi rifle can also be pretty clutch if you're up against a tag in cover which is in suppression fire or uh, Achilles or something like that and you just you're just having so much trouble against armor. Well, Tritac Anyat, Blister Skill 15 in the link, and the K1 combo rifle can make it worth it. Um, climbing Plus probably won't come up that much, but when it does, it'll be useful. And at 25 points, it's not terrible for all of those benefits you get. Just coming back to the, the Vanguards for a moment here, why is the combi rifle version of the K1 better than the sniper rifle? Well, the thing is, most other factions have multi, um, like anti-material, like a, a multi-sniper. So a multi-sniper has the potential to do two wounds instead of one, and the K1 sniper rifle is effectively only reducing a little bit of armor. So you don't get the anti-material like, benefit of this over the, the multi-sniper because both of them are anti-material. And the K1 sniper rifle is very rarely gonna pay off. I mean, against a target that has armor three or four, you're always better using a double action round. Um, let's say you're, you're up against a Yota out, out in the open, you're firing the K1 sniper rifle, we're well, shaving off five armor whereas the multi-sniper is hitting it and it's saving on sixes with two dice, so it's almost as good. The, the, the K1 sniper rifle is probably slightly better in a case like that, but barely, and that particular case comes up so rarely that this is just a slap in the face that they have to have the K1 sniper rifle. So yeah, it's... Um, it's, it's really annoying that Morats are sort of slapped with this, and this is one of the, the points that people rave on about in the forums that, you know, why do Morats get the bad stuff? Um, they should have some more benefits than that. Let's move on now to Kornak Gazrot. Uh, this, guy's, this guy's kind of fun. The, the immediate thing you notice about Kornak is that um, he's not a heavy infantry. He doesn't have two wounds. He's got a single wound plus no wound incapacitation. So the huge drawback of this guy is that if your opponent has shock, and it's really not hard to get shock, I mean any old bulleteer or um, Ruishi with marksmanship level 2, um, you've got submachine guns, you've got a lot of different things, uh, multi-rifles, multi-ammunition in general, just, just cleans this guy up. Let's talk about the good things about him though. The good thing about him is that he's got Stratagos level 1, so he can afford to be a lieutenant. Uh, because you go up to 11 orders with a 10 order group. And uh, secondly, another reason he's good is that uh, if he's your lieutenant and you lose him, you don't lose that badly because of, of the Morat rule. You've got veteran in general. Uh, thirdly, you can make up for his frenzy by putting him in a link team. And uh, what I want to say here is that on Army 6, it says that you can make a Harris with Kornak and two Suryats but you can't include the Raktorak, which is the next model we'll be talking about. 
this guy here, the Rack to Rack Sergeant Major, who's a specialist, because Suryats can't have a specialist, which is kind of annoying. But um, quite recently, it was pointed out by um, LJ Wartrader, and I'll see if I can find the link. Um, there was there was a thread recently about. I think he added it to the wiki. I can't actually find it, but if you check the wiki uh, for for the link team, I'll just put Cornac in here. List of fire teams. So we'll see if we can find it under combined armies. So here it is here. Morats, fire team Harris. So it says Harris number two, Cornac or one Rakterak up to two Suryats, or Cornac plus one Rakterak plus one Suryat. So that is the, the link team that I recommend and that I, I will be playing with Cornac. Because it allows you to have Cornac who um, you know, leads from the front. He's he's got the lieutenant order. If you want to add that to the pool, well, obviously he's automatically added to the pool from Stratagos. And you're dragging along a specialist with you, and then you take like a HMG so yet, so you've got that firepower. But Cornac can also be very useful in close combat. Um, if they tried to take him out with a ninja or something like that, you can berserk and make make it a trade. Um, he's only 41 points, so it's not like you lose that much in the trade. And uh, Berserk can actually be quite powerful in close combat when you've got the Harris. So let's say they've got uh, a tag, and you walk into close combat with Kornak, and you've got the other two guys there as well. The rest of your army, maybe the Dutch are outside, the Oznat may have thrown down smoke, and then you move Kornak into close combat. And what Kornak can do there is he can actually declare a swing with Berserk. So his close combat goes from 22 to 28, and then he's hitting three times with a double action close combat weapon. So let's say you get two hits and one crit they're having to make uh, two saves from the hits plus another three saves in general so it's a crit plus five saves so um, cutting through a tag is going to be pretty easily considering his physical is going to go up from 13 to 15 with the Harris there as well so it's actually a pretty big deal for close combat light flamethrower is useful for defense but the mark 12 it's sort of like a it's a different it's, it's an HMG with a different range band like at least you're getting uh, 18 to 24 uh, so it's more of a short range punch so if you're up really close and you're say between 8 to 16 you fire the the uh, mark 12 if you're within 0 to 8 you use the use the rack to rack right so if you're if you if your rack to rack is in the the link give him a, a Vulcan shotgun for example which is quite a cool cool gun and if you're that close you use him to be the active member whereas if they are beyond 16 inches or beyond 24 inches I should say I should say the third member of your link is the trusty Suryat so with the Suryat you can take an HNG or if you've got the extra point you can take the version with a tin bot but remember the Suryat is the only thing that's hackable in that little trio so uh, Kornak himself and, and Raktorak are not actually hackable which is which is great so I feel like we've talked adequately about Kornak um, with the Raktorak you can give him one of these other guns I prefer I prefer going with either the combi rifle, heavy flamer, or Vulcan shotgun. With the Red Fury, he's only ballistic skill 12, and the special weapons cost, I think, is used, better used elsewhere, as we'll see there are a few other good points. Also, didn't mention, um, don't forget these guys have massive BTS values for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's 9 and 6, respectively. What's next on our list? So we've got the Razyats. These are the drop troopers of the combined army, and they, um, they've got some funky rules. Let's have a look at the Razyats. So here's one of them. You can get this this option with the combi the combi rifle. They haven't resculpted these guys yet, but I think the sculpts are still still kind of cool. I actually prefer this guy because he's got this funny old tube with this uh, little ball. Reminds me of Skaven and Warhammer Fantasy. But the pose is kind of cool. So if I was going to buy a, a Raz yet, I'd, I'd get this model for sure. So let's have a look at them. Um, unfortunately, 4-2 speed, but you don't really have to worry about that so much if you're coming on the flank and then just shooting straight away. I I like the Spitfire version just because I'm a fan of Spitfire, uh, Spitfires in general and drop troopers because you're making the most of being in position to spinning a lot of orders at once. And usually you're only deploying them if you've got a position where you can actually fire along a long line along the side. And you don't typically need more, more range than that because you're so close to them. Uh, your preference may be for the combi rifle or boarding shotgun though, but the Eclipse grenade's actually really cool. Um, there are, there are a, lot the, a lot of things these days which have MSV2, and good opponents will keep them at the back of their lines and really just waiting for the opportunity to use their MSV2 in the active turn. 
uh, but it can also stop you when you're trying to come around there with like your Krakot Renegade or your, your Pretters, your Osnat Link team. So the Eclipse Grenade might actually make a big difference there. He's got physical 13, so he's decent at jumping in, but uh, 13 uh, will be hitting on 16s with Eclipse Grenades. And I, I think the other beautiful thing about Eclipse Grenades is that if, if he's coming after you with a Rishui or a Hex, it's not a Hex or a Nis uh, HMG or something like that, to defend, uh, you're more likely to survive because you have one attempt and if you if you win the face-to-face -face roll he just can't can't keep shooting at you and then of course if you're in the smoke and he sends a close combat uh, trooper to come kill you you've got a uh, natural born warrior having said all that though um, still fairly expensive uh, I don't think this guy's the best drop trooper in the game he's the only drop trooper available for Morat so he's definitely worth a mention but if you compare him to for example um, like a tiger soldier tiger soldier is basically the same points or less and the Tiger has plus one blister skill compared to this guy and Mimetism. So I'd rather have the Tiger because I'm, I'm doing more in the active turn. Whereas this guy's probably better defensively. You could get him to close combat with close combat 21, but because he's got uh, no Prothion or martial arts, I just don't feel it's as, re as reliable. I mean, if you want to try and trade him using Natural Born Warrior, you can. But even if you're up against like a Ninja or a Myrmidon or something like that, your chance are just, chances are just slightly less than 50% and you might end up just spending orders losing your own guy. So I'm, I'm not going to go out and say that these guys are amazing or they're terrible. I just think that they're just very much usable. Um, in my lists I don't really run them just because I have other things I want to run but I'd, I'd definitely give them a go. So next we've got the Rodox. Uh, most people say that the Rodox are the best thing in the faction. I don't like them that much but I can certainly understand why people rate them. Note that these also the guys that come in the uh, the Onyx uh, box set. So uh, the Philly, the Philly widespread. They look cool. I mean, they've got really good sculpts. The the selling point for the Rodox in in the Morat sectorial is that in terms of cost, they don't cost that much more than the vanguards, but they've got mimetism, they've got better armor, they've got better ballistic skill, and they've, they've got a decent array of guns. I mean, yes, you've got a lot of boarding shotguns in there, but you you run a link team effectively with HMG, missile launcher, and so on. I don't think Tritac and Yak can actually join the Rodox, so that's one reason why I prefer running the, the vanguards. The thing about the Rodox though, for me though, is that the Speed 4-2, and I will have pointed out in my fire teams video why I, I don't really like medium infantry, and the, the, the reason why I don't like them in a link, and, and don't get me wrong guys, there are a lot of 4-2 speed troops in the game that I, I do take in my list, I, I run the Nist Sniper when I play Pano, I run the Tiger Soldier and so on, I, I do take 4-2s, and as we'll see in a moment, the Yao Gats are 4-2, and I actually do run the Yao Gats, but the Rodox, Let's say we're just using them purely defensively and they're just hanging back behind cover and just shooting at people with missile launchers and so forth. You have to have like five of them for the core to work and they're just so damn expensive. Um, this particular group here of Morats costs 100 points, 103. So if we delete that and try and take a really cheap Rodok team, we want the HMG and the missile launcher there for sure. And let's say we take the hacker because we need a specialist. Uh, we'll take the paramedic and also we'll take um, the sporting shotgun guy as well. So this link team costs 20 more points, but we don't have tri tag and yet, so no smoke grenades. Uh, the hacker, same willpower, I believe. And we're benefiting from mimetism. So if, if, if this is just purely a defensive link, I mean, our opponent is going to pick the model which is going to deal with this the best. So we're sort of ceding a bit of control to the other guy. But if we use them aggressively to go across the board and, and rip things up with boarding shotguns, the speed 4-2. So they don't even do that as well as, as the as the Vanguard link because Tritac and yet uh, is ballistic skill 12 and you can use her ballistic skill when you're shooting. So yeah, and the EM grenades is something that you have access to with that. So that that's why I don't like Rodox as a core compared to the Vanguards. But I think a lot of people will disagree with me on that. Also, you might want to just use one of these guys because of Super Jump. Uh, Super Jump 
guess it could benefit the core link, but again, I feel like you're having to play it aggressively to do that, and they're just very, very slow, and they deploy in your deployment zone. They don't have infiltrate or forward deployment. So I've never been a huge fan. I understand why people like them, though. I, I think that people are playing a lot of practice games, and mimetism is probably coming up a lot. People are probably finding a lot of situations where the mimetism is just it's just kicking in a lot. They're playing against people that aren't using much MSV2 or MSV1 even, and it's just making a big difference for them. So I understand. I, I can stand why you'd pay an extra 20 points to have your link like kitted out with that. That's, that's all good. Moving on now to the Yao Gats, and uh, these are guys that got resculpted pretty nicely. So the Yao Gat box set has uh, this group here, the Combi Rifles and Panzer Fouts and so forth. And it also has this mean looking sniper rifle guy, which I quite like the look of. He's got a massive axe, even though he's not actually that great in close combat. I have no idea why. I've also got some really sweet pictures of them. Here are my Morats, uh, my Vanguards. And then we've got um, my rendition of the Yalgats here, just hanging out. So I run the Harris, uh, and sometimes just the sniper rifle by himself. So the Harris that I run includes a Lieutenant, and a Harris guy, obviously, and the multi-sniper rifle. So you pay a good 93 points for this Harris team, and I, I run this in my Vanguard link list, uh, because otherwise the Harris duplicates itself with Kornak, and you can't have two Harris at the same time. But the cool thing for me about this link is that you've got a lieutenant who's not really going to get in, in harm's way, uh, if you do if you do lose a, a couple of members and your link's broken, you can use the lieutenant order to move them and shoot them. The combi rifles and Panzerfaust are a really good combination because the extra burst from the Harris allows you to fire both barrels and then you can reload with the Ikadrons. And believe me, it does actually come up. I mean, Morats can achieve so many orders in a list that uh, having the Ikadrons nearby to, to reload is actually something which, which crops up. Also, the Ikadron helps to defend against people coming and creeping up behind the Yargats with its light flamethrowers, so I find that very useful. So, the Panzerfausts can be used in an anti pure way, so you can use it to destroy objectives. That, that sometimes makes a difference in scenarios. Uh, it's very, very effective against things like Achilles, or tags that have a little bit of protection, like Ulans or something like that, or the Tiki Balang. Having three models with MSV2 uh, is really good. Uh, I don't usually like a lot of redundancy, but because you're getting benefits uh, other than just redundancy from them, it's actually kind of good. And then finally, the the ability to fire the sniper rifle and get burst three is 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 pretty cool. The great thing about this Harris is that you've got a gun for all range bands. So if they're very close to you, you stand up, use the, the combi rifle, your ballistic skill 12 plus short range, and you've got uh, burst four there. Or if it's a mid to range, you use the Panzerfaust or very long range, the sniper rifle. So it's a very flexible link. And because you've got them spread out, like you've got your your link leader plus the two eight inches on the other side, or maybe a bit closer, it allows you to cover more fire lanes. And they've all got access to a long range gun, so that works. And if your opponent's trying to overcome one of your Panzerfausts, they're just taking such a risk. I mean, it's not a matter of, okay, I lost a face to face roll, he shot me with a combo rifle, I took one wound, or I, I passed an armor save, or whatever. It's a Panzerfaust, so your chances of just getting eradicated if you lose the face-to-face -face shootout is, is is pretty pretty significant. So I really like this link. Having armor three on them is is, is really beneficial as well, as though you'd, you'd expect something given their cost. And um, although I talk badly of movement four two, it just doesn't matter on these guys because they're not going to be running up the field. Some people. Uh, instead of running the Harris like I do, some people think that it's a good idea to run the Spitfire and like a uh, maybe a Lieutenant and just a whole bunch of uh, cheaper ones, for example, and take a Core Link. But even this sort of Core Link's 150 points and they're slow. You're going to have to be using them aggressively to, to get some value out of them. And yeah, even though Combined MA has a lot of access to smoke, which makes these guys a lot better, spending 155 points on a, li a list, a link of just one one moon models is not really my idea of a good plan. Let's go back to the so. Let's let's talk about the Soyats first before we talk about the Sogarat. So the the Soyats have been getting some really cool sculpts lately. Unfortunately, they haven't put the pictures up on the the new page, but maybe I can find them in this Infinity Soyats. So Soyats are effectively the equivalent of the Mobile Brigada or the Orc Trooper or what have you, the Shangji or the Zhu Yong. 
these guys are cool um, in terms of their sculpts, but in terms of them being just a two wound model with no frills, they aren't that good. They, ca they, they can't have a specialist, so that's why you need to sort of harass up with the rack to rack. They aren't particularly effective in close combat. They have a lot of different weapon loadouts, but they're missing some, some, some things there as well. So the Vulcan shotgun's nice, but uh, potentially the, I mean, boarding shotgun has a couple of different modes. So does the Vulcan shotgun. It's not a bad gun. Multi-rifle's there. It's pretty expensive, though. HMG is what I usually recommend. If you're going to run the uh, Suryat pain train, like if you're going to run Kornak, Rack to Rack, and three Suryats and have like a 200-point heavy infantry link, it's not actually too bad because you can get the specialist out of the Rack to Rack, and you need as many orders as you can if you're playing that kind of list. So the Kornak as the Stratagos lieutenant works pretty well. And then your three Suryats with Blister Skill 16 and plus one burst, I'd run the heavy, heavy rocket launcher and the HMG, and then possibly, uh, sorry, you'd run the HMG with the deflector on that list, plus the HMG, uh, sorry, the, the heavy rocket launcher, and then maybe the multi-rifle, just so you've got some access to shock. So that's actually not a, not a terrible list. Let's have a quick look at it. So if we run the, in fact, let's not run the multi-rifle, let's run the cheapest uh, combo rifle we can. So 37 points, plus we want the HMG with deflector, that's quite important, and we want the heavy rocket launcher because that, that template's very, very powerful both in the active and reactive turn. Then you put Kornak in there as the lieutenant, and lastly we'll take a cheap um, rack to rack with a Vulcan shotgun. So the, the rack to rack's playing the shotgun role instead of the Suryats, so they don't have to uh, worry about spending 37%, uh, 37 points on just a shotgun. So this list is 184 points, and then luckily you still have some cheap cheerleaders uh, in Morats, like the Icadrons, which are very important. The R drone, which I often take because it's like uh, the cheapest possible model you can take in this list, apart from the Hungries, on eight points here. So uh, what else can we chuck in there? Maybe a couple of Dacharazzo. So we've got smoke. Um, that could be quite good defensively. Could even take one Krakot. Although these guys are going to be wanting to do the active turn. I guess if you're going to take a Krakot. What you'd do is where the dash right, so here they are, over here. So take a uh, take a smoke grenade guy. So if you can take the Krakot, I guess you're going to be playing the Suryats defensively, and they are pretty good defensively uh, for the first half of the game. And then they can attack in the second half, and the heavy rock launcher and machine gun are pretty good there. Uh, one thing else, one thing you want to do with this list also is just take a Morat hacking device. So you've got fairy dust, and then lastly you can just chuck some Pretters or something in there. I guess you could put in a Q drone if you really wanted, just to have, because um, you can afford it, you can you can have a bit more of a, a defended back line with this thing. You might even have enough points to put in the Osnat, but then you can't create a core link with it, because you're using that in the the, uh, the Suryats already. So p possibly a Zerat, so you got some specialization. I like taking a couple of Pretters, especially since you can use them to turn into regular orders. So you can see this is this actually starts to turn into a bit of a, a playable list. Obviously, the the last forty points are going to be up to you guys as to what you sort of run, but it's it's doable. So that's that's my thoughts on the pain train. It's actually kind of interesting. It's not better than the Wiming though. I mean, you compare it straight away to Wiming, and then you've got like a nineteen order list, and you've still got that pain train there with a missile launcher in it because of the of the zoo, of the the Zanying, or whatever it is. So just I mean, Morats when you compare them to other factions. They're cool, they have a lot they can do, but they don't quite make it up to the, the, the top top lineups, I think. So let's talk about the Sogarat. Uh, the Sogarat is this model that a lot of people find is quite maligned. Um, so let's talk about why it's not very liked. It has close combat 20, but no close combat stats, and it had has a lot of trouble getting into close combat because it's slow. It's got an auto med kit, which is kind of cool. But you're sort of paying points for it, and you don't really want your guy just to be dying. You want him to be, you know, kicking ass. Here's the Morat rule, so he can't be isolated. So that's kind of nice, and he's got effectively courage. But, you know, you, sometimes you want to be able to pass that willpower check and, and dive into cover, and you can't. So there is always that. I'm a piercing HMG. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see why some people will want it. I'm a piercing just doesn't make a lot of difference in a lot of games. I mean... At, at the be at best, you'll be shaving what two or three points off uh, off a model. It's very rare you'll be t shaving four or five points off a model, and then you're paying fifty six points for them. So I, I feel like you can achieve that with a Suryat, 
who's like 10 15 points cheaper who has an AP uh, an HMG and can form part of a, a Harris or a link that will give it so much firepower it's going to crush whatever it's shooting at anyway and we saw some earlier options for getting rid of armor I mean you have Tritech Anyat with her a K1 combi rifle and a link is probably better than one of these guys she goes up to higher ballistic skill as well the Feuerbach also has a assault pistol ability but it's not like he's on a motorbike. He doesn't. He doesn't have infiltration. He doesn't have forward deployment. He doesn't have uh, airborne deployment. So, getting in there with an assault pistol is just so much less likely. Uh, yes, you can make a Harris team with Cornac, but you're paying like 150 points just for that. It just doesn't make sense. So, uh, for for his points, you don't really get what you want out of this model, and I, I don't really see the role that he fulfills well. So that's one reason why people have been complaining about him. The Raiko. So this guy is very, very similar to the Guizhia from Yu Ching. He's basically got the same stats. So all of this is pretty much the same. He can't be isolated, so that's a big deal with, uh, with being a Morat. But you do pay more points for him. So there's that. Uh, being a Morat means that sometimes he'll want to dive into cover and he can't, whereas the Guizhia can. He's got an AP heavy pistol, but you lose the heavy flamethrower if you take that option. The one thing I'll say about this guy before I skip him is that Corvus Belly, at this present point in time, are allegedly coming up with new rules for manned tags, which sound quite exciting. Today's the 3rd of December 2016, so by the time you watch this video, maybe they will have brought something new out. Just saying. I'm not going to spend too much time on the drones. Um, these drones are available right throughout Combined Army and all of the sectorials, but um, you may as well run them because they're cheap and they provide extra orders. Um, there's nothing especially good or bad about them. You definitely want the Ica drones, I feel, to reload the uh, the Panzerfausts if you are running the, the Panzerfausts. And also because these guys are super cheap and they help defend your lines with the Flamers. So nearly there, the Zerat Special Missions Regiment is the Infiltrator. Here she is here, here's the sniper rifle version of her, and the frustrating thing about the Zerat is that she's supposed to be this button-pressing, infiltrating trooper. She's got mimetism, but not camouflage. So that means that if you're not going first, it's very easy for your opponent to pick this model off. Uh, the powerful thing about Mark Estate is it allows you to get around the battlefield uh, and ignore a lot of AROs because they can either attempt to discover and you move past behind a wall or they attempt and fail it. She is cheaper though, so for a Ford Observer shotgun you got 22 points, that's one um, option I take quite a bit. You can take the Assault uh, Hacker if you really need like a, a hacker in the scenario you're playing because you're getting plus 3 for pressing the button or something like that. But the hacker just becomes vulnerable to killer hackers, and because you're not in marker state, it's very, very easy for them to target you. So I don't really like the Zerats. If this was a faction where you did have something else available, like if you could take a Shrouded or Malignos, or if you had access to like a killer, killer nin ninja or a, a Crocman Ford Observer, of course you'd take those troopers. But with Morats, you're trying to sort of make do with what you've got in order to benefit from some of the better capabilities. So Dutch Rites are Witch Soldiers, excellent. You can form a link with these guys. So ordinarily, when I play a combined army, I just run the Chain Rifle version of them because the Chain Rifle uh, model is just amazing. For 14 points, you've got a guy who has Extreme Impetuous, so you basically throw the smoke grenade down before the, the orders are even spent, which is fantastic. The Physical 14, which is one of the highest in the game, so goes to 17 when you're shooting at close range, so the ability to actively throw smoke even at long range or to do a smoke dodge is massive. They've got mimetism as well, so sometimes they can even beat TR bots where they walk in front of the bullets, throw the smoke grenade down, roll a 14, there are no crits. Or even if you roll like a 10 and they're up against mimetism and they just don't crit, you're fine. On top of being able to throw smoke reliably, they can then move into close combat with the smoke. So what you do is you put down the smoke template so it's not touching the enemy model, but there's a, a gap of half a millimeter, half an inch between the template and the enemy model. Then you walk the Datchrites into close combat, close combat 21 with martial arts level 4, very, very powerful. You can make a, a core link with them. So one thing I often look at is 
deliberately making a call link which just has like the two chain rifles and a combi rifle light smoke grenade launcher so you're you're actually burst two with the the smoke grenades but i'd only do that if you don't need the core team out elsewhere Morats have such good talk call links. We're about to talk about the Osnat, which is the best one. The Vanguards, as I discussed earlier, are very, very good because of Tritac and yet. And this, the Soyats, for example. But if you, for some reason, are not running those three call links, you might consider running the Dacharats and the Link because they actually do it quite well. So lastly, the reason why you might want to play Morats and why they can be competitive is the Osnat hunting regiment. Note that if you are pedantic and you specifically want the model that has the light smoke grenade launcher, you have to buy the core starter set. But there's nothing wrong with just buying the one that has the Vulcan shotgun and proxying it as a smoke grenade launcher. And, and trust me guys, you want the smoke grenade launcher, not the Vulcan shotgun. The reason why is that smoke is one of the most powerful things in this game. And the ability to fire smoke along range with the smoke grenade launcher with a core bonus is just incredible. So here's the link that I run. I run three Gakis and one Preta. These are extremely impetuous and irregular, so that's their massive drawback, but that's completely negated and turned into a positive by the fact that they're in a core link, so they're just regular troops. So you pay 37 points for this link only, allowing you to afford all the firepower, and all game long, they're shooting with the smoke grenade launcher in front of your Yaogats. And the Yaogats are, are, are sh sorry, am I thinking of the right thing? The Yaogats? Yeah, the multi spectral visor guys. Also, you are shooting onto objectives. You're walking onto objectives with the Oznats. You're shooting stuff in the way of enemy arrows like um, TR bots and so forth, and then moving to where you need to be. These guys can be directly compared to Quang Shi with the Celestial Guard like smoke grenade launcher. Now, the Celestial Guards have a benefit where um, once you create a call link, it stops them from frenzying or being impetuous, then you can move it to something else and move it back to them, whereas the Osnat, according to HSN3, you can't actually move the link team to something else and move it back, because once a link's broken, it cannot be reformed on the Osnat. So that's a, that's a disadvantage. But an advantage they have over the Quangxi version of the link is that they are speed 6-4 for the Osnat and 6-6 for the Hungries. So with just like two orders, you've already traversed 24 inches and suddenly you're walking to close combat. That close combat 19. So it, let's imagine the Osnat, who's close combat 21, walks in with all five of them onto a tag and then attacks. So you're close combat 21, you're throwing five dice, 10% chance to crit on each of those dice, and you're getting plus four physical, so it's physical 14. So with just one order, you're just going to shred something. Even a model like Achilles, for example, you've got a chance of beating. Achilles can actually attack back with martial arts level three or four and, uh, and get a crit pretty easily, but uh, one one thing you can do is put the smoke in front of him, move the odds of Osnats into the smoke, and then, uh, so idle, so that he has to waste his order with a reset or change face, and then move them all into close combat with him, break the link by swapping it to something else, and then when he attacks you in his turn, you can uh, activate two of them and have the other three uh, adding support. So you've got two separate guys which are burst four, I think it is. No, um, yeah, so Achilles attacks and you react with two of them and have the other three doing support. So you've got two models with burst four and Achilles is burst two. Um, so you, if you guys can get your head around the maths there, Achilles is actually in a little bit of trouble. He can fight his way out, but you've got a serious chance of ripping him up. And for 37 points, that's half the cost of Achilles. So that's a trick that they can pull. I just can't recommend these guys enough. Um, if it weren't for these guys, I would say that Morats are a really weak sub-faction. But just just to go back to Morats overall, I feel that they're really playable. And th the main reasons why I feel like Morats are playable are just the Osnat, just all the reasons I described there. That's the first one. Secondly, the Yalgat Harris is actually very, very good because of the synergy with amazing smoke capability in Morats and the Panzerfaust they have for that damage. And thirdly, you've got the characters, Tritak, Anya, and, and Kornak Gazrot, which, if used correctly and used carefully in synergy with other uh, models on the list, can be very, very good. The reasons why Morats are just kind of an annoying sub-faction, though, are 
that there are so many little things which just shouldn't really be holding them back. Like, it's not going to overpower them if you make the, Korg the Kurgat uh, able to join the Harris team. It's not going to overpower them if you give the Morats a, a multi-sniper instead of a K1 sniper. It's not going to make these guys overpowered if you improve the Sogarat so it was cheaper or had an ability that made it better. And I even think it's not going to overpower Morats if you change the Morat rule itself to make them a bit more thematic make them more ferocious, give them a close combat ability which is very rarely going to crop up but will make them distinct. I think one one thing that Infinity suffers for in, from in general is that the factions aren't very distinct from each other mechanically and that's what allows you better balance. So the game is, is balanced but at a price, you know, you don't have that much distinction. And to feel like a Morat player and be a Morat player, you want to have access to things that other factions, you know, can't do. Whereas this this faction in general doesn't really have anything radical that that only it can achieve. The Oznats are probably the crow's closest. Whew. Anyway, I uh, played a tournament recently with them, went two wins, one loss. You guys can check out the video for that elsewhere on my YouTube page, but I'm going to keep playing these guys. These are really, really, really cool. And uh, maybe more releases will come out for them in future. Maybe some of the rules will be updated. But uh, really fun, really good sculpts. I think that's all I have to say about them actually. Hope you guys enjoy it.